Okay, thank you very much. Um, this is the DACHA study, which has been going for a year. Um, and I just thought that David Seymour's introduction about how this event works is very pertinent because this study actually grew out of Clark's, which were the precursor to ARCS, um, the National Care Home Network. And we had an event, there was priority setting, and we were asked to feed into an NIHR commissioning brief, which then led to a call, which unsurprisingly generated a lot of conversations within our individual and across ARCs with the net result that this study has as co-applicants six ARCs, nine universities, two charities, um, including some PPIE and one care home representative organization who links us in with the Care Provider Alliance. And I'd also like to stress our PPIE because it builds on the ARC work where we are actually taking the involvement into care homes with residents groups and with frontline care home staff, as well as family carers and friends. So there's already been conversation about the care home sector, but I mean, I think the things that need to be stressed is that outside of research, we really haven't known very much about this population. Uh, but from research, we do know that these residents have an inequitable and unpredictable access to health care. Um, and so you could be five miles apart um, in a very similar care home, but have very different uh, services provided to you. And that relationship between the NHS and social care sort of plays out in the care homes, and I'm quoting Alison Milne here, are a solution for the NHS. We now see about 50% of new admissions into care homes are from hospital and they provide long all our long-term care in this country virtually they also provide respite intermediate care and palliative care and rehab but equally they're also seen as a problem if they pose what is re represented as inappropriate demands on urgent and emergency care and secondary care so that's sort of a background history in terms of how we think about data we have a situation of where the basic resident data is collected by multiple agencies, but all in unaligned databases. And we don't have a systematic approach that's been agreed across social care um, or with health. Plus, we are looking at a major provider of long-term care. It's well over two times as many beds in care homes as in hospitals in this country. And just a little bit of background information, which I think also gives you a little bit of the granularity of when we're thinking about data, that the average care home with on-site nursing is still only 28 beds and without nursing, residential care is 30. Now there's a massive range and new builds are much larger than that. But I think it just shows you just how um, variable across the sector we're dealing with and that how people pay for themselves, so self-funders account for 45%, some paying top up, only about a third wholly state funded and 8% receiving their funding via the NHS. Now that affects also where the data sits in terms of uh, contractual responsibilities and so on. And a third of care homes actually are small businesses where the ownership is only for one to two care homes. So that's about bringing in quite a big constituency to think about standardizing data and data sharing. So, as I said, DATCHA was started a year ago in November, and it was a bit of a niche project uh, for about two months. Um, uh, and then suddenly COVID exposed the fact that care homes were hiding in plain sight. And we don't have to persuade anybody now for the need for linked routine health and social case data with information from care homes. COVID has generated not only a lot of interest, but has also put a very high burden on care homes for reporting data on their organization and residents. So we know, I would think to this audience, that collated accessible data on residents is key to be able to support focus planning and care. And making care homes part of a health and social care data system is a priority. So this poses some interesting challenges for DATCHA because we were thinking we were going to have to do lots of consultations around getting people engaged. That's not the issue now. The issue now is DATCHA keeping up with all the innovation and change that is happening across the country and the digital enabling of care homes. 
And on the right, these are two recent papers in editorial that Barbara, who's on the uh, project team, wrote about what COVID had exposed. And this is actually a galley proof um, um, where we, we summarize where the methodological challenges and solutions are. And if you want to uh, have sight of that, do uh, email me directly. So DACHA has two study big study aims. I'm only going to really focus on the second. The first bit is about developing resources for researchers and service development, learning about assessment and outcome measures and what supports innovation and implementation. As I say, all of that feeds into the development of minimum data sets, but there's not time to go into that detail. So really what I'm now going to talk about is how DATCHA is trying to synthesize existing evidence and data sources that could complement the data that care homes themselves collect. So this is a, a diagram and all researchers like to suggest that research is very smooth and one work package will flow into another. I'm not expecting you to read it, but what I'm going to talk about are two of the uh, work packages where the deliverable in work package three is uh, an overview of all the data that care homes are currently collecting and what they are and are not sharing and how they're doing it. And then the creation of a resident data set, which is created from routine health and social care data, which has been developed for care delivery. So work package three, which is underway at the moment, well, part of it, we will, on our original uh, plan, the survey of care home providers working with ARCS and the care home network that I talked about right at the beginning um, was going to and is going to look at what data is collected, how it gets stored and who it shares, shared with. But this audience will understand that yet another survey going out to care home providers would not have been accepted. And we're waiting to do this in partnership with the Care Provider Alliance and with the representative organisation. We also are very keen to see how software and technologies have been implemented in care homes. And I see we've got people from CASPA um, on this meeting, which is the Association of Software Developers uh, for uh, Social Care. And we have uh, one of the main providers, um, person centered care, are involved on our steering group. But they are indirectly or directly af affecting how care homes are organizing already their content and direction of travel. COVID, as I say, we have capacity tracker, we have um, different systems like in Greater Manchester are already changing the kind of information that is being entered into shared data, data systems. And we're seeing individual uh, geographical areas developing new approaches to data sharing. So we are starting that survey in 2021 um, to make sure that we can capture what COVID has already shown and not duplicate that but also focus more on some of the content and process issues. We're also looking at minimum data set content in those that are used routinely in care homes across America, in parts of Canada, across New Zealand and in regions of um, these other countries. And the realist review is really to understand about what you need to have in place for effective uptake and develop a theory of what works when and in what circumstances to reflect the very particular English context. So work package four, we've already had the Health Foundation um, mentioned and they are leading this. This is Adam Stevenson and Anna Walters working with us and they became involved because it builds very much on earlier work that they did with NHS English Vanguard's which were about how do you improve health and social care working and um, that care homes were part of that program. And one of the key things that they were able to deliver on that was identifying residents in routine data, which is very hard because postcodes are not precise enough and a lot of social care data doesn't carry NHS identifiers. So they're bringing that expertise to look at how we can link relevant health and social care data that is specific to the care home resident using routinely collected data. So that's hospital data, primary care data, urgent and emergency care data, and social care data held by local authorities. And to do that, initially, we are working with two integrated care systems and 40 care homes to build a prototype. So the focus is making linked data sets, which are what 
using data used for direct care to make it available for secondary use. And the hope is that we will be able to extend this and already some integrated care services have signaled they would like to be linked with DATCHA, but our original bid didn't have that built in. And just to note that we, we are now in a situation where we have ICSs covering 60% of the population. So this is a shift in the organisation that is also happening uh, quite rapidly. So the kind of issues that we are considering is essentially differentiating between what is service evaluation and research. So administrative data is collected for direct care and any secondary use of that data is strictly governed rightly by rules and legislation. Now we are arguing that what we are doing is service evaluation. It's a retrospective evaluation and analysis that can support commissioning and planning. We are not using the data to directly affect the care of particular individuals as you would in a trial. And so that is something that we really need to work through with our ICSs to assure that it is recognised and accepted as service evaluation. The other issues that we are working through and are starting conversations are around interoperability. We know, and the Health Foundation has done a lot of work around this, that Essentially, data sources in health are reasonably well standardized, but we have a lot of variability with social care data. Um, so we're interested in identifying the data items that we can um, confidently uh, identify that are routinely collected in both sites. And as I said, looking to extend that work to maximize the use of commonly recorded information because there is so much local variation in so social care data. Governance and ethics, I've alluded to, with the minimum data set would be pseudonymized, no residents can be directly identified, and that, as I said, will be an issue. It may be that we will have to work with a trusted third party to facilitate that linkage if the data that is held by social care means that individuals could be um, identified from, for example, age and gender and so on. Um, and uh, I've got a whole paragraph for Anna about that, if that's an issue that people want to ask some questions about. So who's going to own this? Well, we're in the DATCHA study, this is a descriptive analysis that we will be actively sharing with the local ICSs. Going forward, it's obviously about how do we disseminate that and how do we maximize value? And it's too early to tell how the data platforms could be organized. So just to give you a flavor then, the final work package is drawing together what we will produce in the two ICSs of the routine data and then taking the learning from work packages one to three and there are a series of consultation events with all the different invested stakeholders um, to develop a minimum data set for care homes and hope that the, by collecting data directly of care homes that will not duplicate but will complement and match the routinely collected health and social data thereby reducing the very high burden on care homes to complete data um, uh, for lots of different stakeholders. So Work Package 5 is also very interested in the quality of the data and how to, we've identified a wide range of scales, attributes, outcomes, and so on. And it's, so it's, there's plenty one could, but it's really getting down to what one should to be able to support good quality of care. And we're delighted that we have Anne-Marie Tahars who leads on ASCOT um, um, adult social care outcome tool working on this with Adam Gordon. And then we go forward to evaluate. So in summary, I hope what I've captured for you is the heterogeneity of care homes and residents of which outside research we know very little. Um, absence of high quality routine data, this is what today is all about. Challenges of having unaligned data sets and the need for linkage, but also the impact of COVID. And so we are really trying to make sure that what we work on is not left behind, but equally can supply content and process into uh, initiatives going forward. Um, explained how we propose to link the um, routine core data set at the MDS sectors with wider data sources. Um, I'm arguing for a potential of a minimum data set to improve commissioning and delivery for residents of care care. So this is my contact details. There's a project website, uh, tweet, 
handles. If you are interested, particularly in the survey, it's Barbara who's leading that. And as I say, Work Package 4 is very much led by Anna um, Walters, working with Adam Stevenson at the um, Health Foundation. These are all the other people. It's a huge list. And I must stress that what you have heard today are my opinions and not those of National Institute of Health Research, um, HSDR, or ARC East of England. Thank you.